Um, while we're talking about DC superheroes, let's quickly talk about the recent uh, Green Lantern trailer. Ooh, the Green Lantern trailer. So we're both very excited about the Green Lantern yes. movie. What did you think of the trailer? I think it looks great. I think the more the you know the footage that they showed from WonderCon, the four uh, minutes, the that four we saw minute before. footage, and then this new TV trailer. I think it looks awesome. I think Oa looks beautiful. I'm really looking forward to big space epic scenes. Um, I think Parallax looks really freaking cool. And uh, and I, I know I saw people on the internet who were not liking, who were complaining about Ryan Reynolds. Um, then the new TV spot has this scene. It, it's been in other ones too, but his scene with when he's sitting in his living room with the green lant with the, the lantern for the first time and he's kind of muttering like, Okay, I'm just supposed to say the oath. Hold the ring up to the lantern and say the oath and he holds it up and it's, you know, I pledge allegiance to this lantern that I got from an alien. And you know Sure. And I, I actually really liked that scene because I'll admit I think Ryan Reynolds is very charming. Oh he he's, is, he's, absolutely. He's easy on the eyes. Um, very, but very sexy man. I, I thought it was a really fun and cute scene because it, to me, rem made me believe that this is a guy who got a magic ring sure. and his response seemed really believable that you would be kind of like, okay, what do I do now? Like, Absolutely. this is weird and I'm not quite sure what to make of it all. Absolutely. You know, I think what we all like is we all, on the one hand, we want our comic book movies to take our heroes and their their predicaments very seriously. I mean, to us, this is serious stuff. Yeah, of we course. We want it to be taken seriously. But on the other hand, we know it's absurd. I mean, there well, is an yeah, absurdity to it. I mean, essentially, it. Green Lantern boils down to a guy gets a magic ring from space and becomes a space cop. Yeah, I mean, I and, mean and there's nothing wrong. And it's fantastic, and I love it. Sure. And to me, the important thing is that it shows is that the movie, when they make movies out of these characters, that it's clear that the creators of the movies really took care to do these characters right and to do justice to these characters and so far what i've seen from the green lantern movie it it seems like they have and i'm really looking forward to it yeah it, it i think the new trailer makes it far more uh god i hate to use the word star wars but more sort of space opera yeah and that's you know, than cool before. that's what and, i want from a green yeah, lantern movie the original trailer you know all they this the one month month months ago you know all they had was kind of the live action shot yeah. so they kind of had to make it more of like a slapstick because that's all they had without post-production and it's been getting more and more space and, uh, opera and i think it's and, it's good it looks really yeah good. i agree and speaking of comic book movies thor comes out pretty soon oh yeah we're gonna next be seeing week that one. right may uh, 6th May 5th. Wow, is that next week already? Well, yeah, I think wow. so. So yeah, next week. As you which, can tell, I do not have um, a calendar up right now. <laughs> uh, I know that early reviews of it, because I think it's already yeah, out in Hollywood. Australia or something, I, I think it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. I thought it was just preview sh um, screenings. But early reviews of it have been great. Yeah, The Hollywood Reporter gave so, it like a, a really good yeah, review. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward yeah, to that I'm one too. Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, Thor is one I liked as a kid, and then I not I stopped liking him for a while because I got just too, too stupid, and now I really like him again. In fact, one of the ones I'm planning on picking up is Fractions, the Mighty Thor yeah. series. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So I've while got, you... What? While you talk about your next thing, I am going to leave the room briefly to get the power supply for our laptop because I'm noticing that our battery is in the red. No! See how much we do for you people? We're draining our laptop battery just for you. All right, so I talked last time, you know, uh, it's just worked out that there's seems to be a weekly invincible report for me. But I did uh, talk last time about how much I loved the Invincible Ultimate Collection number three uh, by uh, Kirkman and uh, Otley, writing yeah. by yeah, writing by uh, by Kirkman and and art by Otley, and so I immediately ran out and picked up the fourth because it was just so incredible. And this is issues uh, I think thirty six to forty seven. And they are absolutely wonderful. I'm trying not to give uh, too much away simply because 
Um, I know that there's someone else in this household who's eventually going to get to them, so I don't want to give the whole plot away. I'm back. But this this brings even more uh, new villains into the uh, scenario, takes care of some old ones, his his life problems with his school and with his girlfriend and with his friends come to a head. And, you know, I absolutely love the way that um, Kirkman is able to sort of combine that human interest story of how's he going to do in his classes? How are things with his girlfriend? How are things with his friends? How are things with well, his sure, parents? I think what he does well with- is... Uh- because I I've read the first two um, collective Ultimate collections, volumes, yeah. I think what he does really well is he he shows that you know being a teenager can be really hard. And, and he's almost not a teen anymore. He's obviously eighteen or nineteen, I think, in this one maybe. Yeah, but that being a teenager can be very very difficult as it is. And when you're a superhero, on the one hand, it's really cool, but on the other hand, those teen problems are often magnified. Sure, and. Uh... One of the things that uh, is given away on the cover of the next one, I'm, I'm looking to see, it's not given away on the cover of this one, but it's given away on the cover of the next one, is uh, a sidekick oh. begins to come in. And it's just a well, whole... Well, because all good superheroes need a sidekick. That's right. And, uh, and this particular one is, uh, it's a, again, a, a, just a, written real well, real interesting scenarios. And for those of you who don't read Invincible, it's an Image comic, so it's, it's, you know, Image is more indie than Marvel or DC, but it's still very easy to find because it's not, you know... Well, it's a big seller, too. Yeah, Invincible yeah. sells uh, many thousands of copies. It does, time. it does. It's not one of the tops, but I guess they call it like a sleeper hit because, mm-hmm. you know, it started doing pretty low business but ended up doing pretty pretty serious business. So, yeah, that's Invincible. So... Next on the agenda, especially now that you're back, thank you for plugging in the laptop. You're welcome. I just was getting really stressed as I was watching the the battery indicator keep going down and down and down, and I was just getting very worried that there was just going to be silence where the podcast shut off because the battery stopped. See, it's a guy and a girl thing because I was looking at it going, okay... 25 minutes we can do this we can just get under you know it's almost like how far can you push it can we push it to the last minute i was just worried that i would be in the middle of saying what was my the most amazing profound statement i had ever made about anything and it would shut off and then i would never get to finish my most profound statement that would that would be bad that would be very sad now i can i am glad we get your profound statement that's right all right, so Michelle reads the Eisners. Yes, so um, this week I did not manage to read an entire um, uh, category. What is the category? The, oh, that is, that is a good thing to say. So the category I read this week is Best Continuing Series. Um, there's six nominees. And so you read every single issue ever done on <laughs> so, all of those? So what no. I did, because I do have to work and do other things too. Sadly, I don't get to spend my entire day reading comics. Damn it. Um, so what I decided to do, because some of these series have quite a lot of issues accumulated um is i read er, the the first trade paperback of each series which i know is not maybe the the best uh idea because some of these series who know maybe got really fantastically amazing after their first few issues but i figured that would just give me a good sort of starting point starting point sure. You know, standard uh, guideline for comparing to and just it is read both first... a lot to read and let's face it, yeah. it's a lot of money to yeah, if you're so doing all six or whatever they are and you know for every, all of all their the issues, co- yeah. you know that's a lot. So I'm just doing I'm just reading the trade paperback for the first one um, and the three that I read this week. Well, actually, that's not true because Lock and Key I'd already read a while ago, but the three that I will be talking about this week. Are Chew by John Lehman, art by Rob Guillory, uh, published by Image, uh, Lock and Key by Joe Hill, art by Gabriel Rodriguez, published 
by IDW, and Scalped by Jason Aaron and R.M. Guerra, published by Vertigo. Um, okay. So those are the three that I read this week. I'll talk about the other three next week and give my my choice for the best of the category. But Sounds good. So yeah, first up, I guess I'll talk about Chew, which I had have had recommended to me by many people. Um, and it is about, about a guy named Tony Chu, who is an FDA agent, and he is also a sibopath, which means that he gets psychic images from anything he eats, where he, when he takes a bite of something, he gets this mental picture of where that food came from. So in the case of, well... Let's say a piece of bacon. He sadly gets a mental picture of the pig that was slaughtered in the last few moments of its life in a slaughterhouse. That would make me not want to eat so bacon. So he's, as you can imagine, eating is a bit of a trial for him. Uh, the only food that he does not get any sort of psychic impressions from are beets. And so anyway, so it takes place in this kind of... Borscht for everybody. I know. You would get really tired of beets, I think, really <laughs> quick. So this takes place in this um, kind of alternate reality where chicken has been banned because of a bird flu epidemic, but it's made very clear early on that there's a lot of un unknowns about this bird flu epidemic that... Um, is it all a government conspiracy? Is it all a hoax? How many people really died? Why? What is the government trying to hide? And the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is at the forefront of solving food-related crimes. And, and so Tony Chu gets hired by the FDA to, to help solve all these cold cases and catch people who are, uh, you know, um, committing murders because of chicken prohibition and chicken black market stuff. And, and, uh, it's, it's, it's really creative. How that was does, my thought. Tell us how, uh, he figures out what happened to these, uh, dead people. Oh, uh, he eats them. Yum. Yes. Yeah, so he, he gets to gnaw on, on dead body parts. Um, but it's what he does for his job because it's important work that he's doing. Uh, the, the scene actually where he learns what his job is is quite, quite funny um, when he learns what his job entails. But yeah, it's, uh, when I read it, I was honestly, I just was blown away because it's just such a creative idea that would have never occurred to me in a million years. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, how did John Lehman and Rob Guillory even come up with this this idea? Like, it's just so out there. But it's great. It's really, it's got moments that are really funny. It's very suspenseful. I, I think probably the best compliment I could give to it is that after reading volume one, I want to read volume two to find out what happens next. All right. Um, that is a good compliment. Yeah, uh... Art-wise, I love the art. I really, really like Rob Guillory's style. It reminds me of some like European comics that I've seen with kind of a a cartoony style, mm -hmm. but um, really, really great, really dynamic, really fits the the story very, very well. Um, he draws great expressions on his characters' faces that are are lots of fun. Um, so yeah, I I really enjoyed the series or the the volume one that I read. It was a lot of fun, and I I'm definitely going to be picking up volume two at some point to Excellent. to read. And then I read Lock and Key. Um, by, Soon to be a television series. Yeah, which got picked up. Chew actually did too. I'm not 